Good. Good to see you. Yeah, not too bad. I was just, uh, I was saying, you know, usually a Friday night, it's 10 p.m. over here. I would have other plans, but I've got an early flight tomorrow because I'm going to see our friend Anthony fight in Sheffield. Oh, really? Let's go. Let's <laughs> yeah, go. It's, it's exciting. They've, it looked fair play to KSI. You know, I know you don't like him too much, but he gave him a nice opponent, a proper time to train. I think he's going to do all right. Yeah, no, he, he seems to be taking this fight more seriously. I've seen his Twitter posts, like, sparring 18 rounds. He said he did 18 rounds, 1,000 squats and push-ups. Uh, he, he's ready, man. I, I love that kid, so I, I wish him the best of luck. No, for sure. But, but more importantly, you have got the biggest fight of your life. You're back in the ring, finally, against a guy who almost certainly won't pull out, a really dangerous opponent, Anderson Silva, legendary. And you have changed your tune for this one. You're not the uh, you're not the heel. You're not the bad guy going into this one. You've been very respectful and showing you know a lot of love to Anderson Silva. Yeah, look, I I mean he was one of my idols growing up, uh, so I have nothing but respect for him. And I, I'm I'm gonna feel bad when I knock him out. To be honest, like I I don't know <laughs> if I should say sorry or something, but like uh, <laughs> it, it's gonna happen and. It's unfortunate, but everyone thinks I'm going to lose. I'm the underdog going into this fight. Dana White said I wouldn't do it. So everyone could be mad at, at Dana. Jake, I want to ask you, there's like, in like a young man's life, right? There's like seminal moments where if one little thing went differently, the butterfly effect, right? Like everything would have changed. Let's say that day in Ohio at, at Quaker Steak and Lube, if Anderson tells you to F off and says, no, kid, I don't want to take a picture with you. Do you think the whole Jake Paul empire maybe doesn't happen? Because your first experience with fame is a bad one. Yeah, who who knows? You know that that it it could be very true. The butterfly effect is so scary to even think about or to try to comprehend. Every single thing that happens in someone's life changes the rest of it. Um, and, and period. Like no no yeah. nothing else needed to be said. But yeah, if he would have been mean to me, like who knows if I would have liked fighting or continued to watch fighting because even, even entertainment, like, like maybe you would have gone, you know what? Celebrities suck. I'm, you know, I'm from Ohio. I'm going to stick to whatever it is my dad wants me to do. And I won't do any of this entertainment stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who knows, man? Um, I don't know, but, but here we are now and it, it feels destined. Uh, and it's weird because he told me that I could do anything that I set my mind to. Uh, that's what he told me when we met when I was 13 years old. And so I guess now I'm setting my mind to knocking him out. So maybe it comes back full circle for him in a, in a weird way. I imagine though, going into this fight, there is anger there, not towards Anderson, not towards anyone else, but towards Haseem Rahman, Tommy Fury, people like this, you know, uh, Eddie Hearn, people who have, have stood in the way of your boxing career this year. And, and have, have kind of halted your progress a little bit. So Anderson, maybe not so much, but you'll be going in there with a chip on your shoulder as usual, right? Yeah, I got, I got two chips on my shoulder, uh, <laughs> one, one on each side, man. And I love proving people wrong. And I use all of the things that happened this year as motivation. I think everything happens for a reason and someone has to pay for all of those things. And uh, October 29th, I, I get to unleash uh, violence and create a war um, and get those emotions off my chest. It's sad that it has to be honest who takes it, though, isn't it? Yeah, look, but I mean, he's a great fighter. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. I, I don't think he can take it for, for long. I don't think he, you know, I, I just have been... I, I'm charged up right now, man. This is the best camp ever, feeling greater than ever. You have to think, I've only been boxing professionally for two years. Mm -hmm. Or, sorry, this is my third year. But By the way, everyone, you first laced up gloves four years ago. Less. Yeah, no, exactly. The first time so, at, as a pro, when people saw me fight Tyron Woodley in the last fight, that's only my second year of boxing. Mm -hmm. This has now been a whole extra year to train. So if you think like, how good did I get in my first year? How good did I get in my second year? My third year has been the most amount of progress so far and no one's seen that. So they're going to see a new fighter uh, and I'm excited for that. What do you make of Haseem uh, going over and kind of 
subtly teaming up with with your old rival is it a cheap move on on, on his part do you think uh no it's smart it's smart uh to, you know to use all the clout that he can get out of this uh and it's crazy i mean i i just take it as a compliment right like i created a household name damn near without even fighting him so it just shows you how good i am at marketing and making my opponents famous when not a single person in the world even knew he existed besides his mother and his father and his cousin jerry the likelihood that that he ever fights you again is pretty slim i would imagine i no no shot i mean he was scared the first time uh, so uh, imagine now uh, the, the kid, the kid will amount to nothing. That's why I, I don't mind speaking on his name and giving him more clout. He will amount to nothing. He's a worthless individual. He's a terrible person, terrible business person, uh, a, a loser. Uh, he life will not do or, or hand him great things. Um, so it is what it is. And, shouldn't have given him the opportunity in the first place, but I just wanted yeah. to save the event. You're well able to be dismissive of him and kind of brush him off, you know, whatever. But the name that I'd imagine, if I were Nikisa, I would tell you no more of this Tommy stuff. Enough with <laughs> the Tommy thing. He's pulled out the two times. Dubious, dubious for the second one, right? Like that one, first one, he broke a rib, whatever. Second one, very, you know, uh, conspiratorial maybe. But it, do your business people tell you shut up about Tommy now when when you get asked about him? Uh, no, like, I, I mean, there's no real, like, game being played. Uh, I, I do think he got scared the second time. Um, and, and maybe he'll get scared again. Uh, but it is what it is. And uh, I, I just want to make him pay for that. And I think where things are going now, like we've given up trying to put on an event with him. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think his team is doing it now. Right. They're the ones working on it. And they're the ones that are going to be taking all the risk if Tommy pulls out. So financially, I would be protected in that case. And, uh, And I would just love to see this kid who's like, delusional uh he's a you know pretty boy who talks a lot i would just love to see him like asleep on the canvas it's personally for me something that needs to happen um could you so believe it goes, it that opponent he announced for november what could you believe when he announced that opponent for november i mean bro it's embarrassing like it's embar- which is I, I don't know what he's doing. Like, you're not going to get better fighting people who are, you know, trash workers and tomato cans and aren't boxers. Um, you know, he, he's finding the, the local employee <laughs> who thinks they're a boxer and, and going in there with them. And, and to him, he might do that for the rest of his life and, and think he's cool and think he's great and, that'll, you know, stroke his ego and his uh, girlfriend will think he's a really good boxer. So maybe he'll never go up against a, a real fighter and uh, he'll just like play boxing his whole life. A very real fighter, Anderson Silva. You fight on October 29th, Fight TV pay-per-view here in the UK and Ireland, Showtime pay-per-view in the United States. I mean, this is someone who uh, certainly, he, he takes all of the boxes, bigger, Southpaw, pro boxing record, winning record, beat a world champion within the last couple of years, ticks every box that your critics have, but I have a feeling they're not going to be satisfied regardless of what the result is. They're, they won't be, man. Uh, it, it's the name of the game. But meanwhile, they'll suck KSI off for his <laughs> performances. I've just always had the hard road. I've always had the hard path. I've always uh, had the uphill battle. I've, I've always had to fight harder to earn people's respect. Um, that That's just the story of my life. Uh, but I'm not complaining, you know, because look where it's gotten me. Uh, and I'll just continue to prove people wrong. And then maybe eventually in hindsight, people will realize, realize what I did for this sport and, and what I, you know, if, if KSI beat Tyron Woodley, like, Oh my God, he's the greatest <laughs> thing ever. Like, yeah. you know, 
So it, it just, uh, it just my path and my journey. And there, there's nothing wrong with that. Each person has their own, their own struggles and own battles that they have to deal with. Jake, thank you so much for your time. Your, your, your schedule is, is pretty much lined out now. October 29th, Anderson Silva. Next one, probably somewhere in either the UK or somewhere where they can get some money together, maybe the Middle East, possibly against Tommy Fury. And uh, then next summer, maybe you finally do this. I, I call it a side quest, the KSI fight. It's like you've got your professional boxing career and then you could also do this. It's like if you released another single or if maybe you went and did a movie. This is like uh, another thing that's not necessarily within the, the 6 and 0 Jake Paul story. No facts. Uh, it is a side quest. And whenever KSI wants to volunteer for unconsciousness, <laughs> I'll be ready. I'm right here. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to see him tomorrow. Do you want me to give him a message? Yeah, j- just say Jake wants to know when you're going to volunteer to be <laughs> unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, or, you yo, so you should be like this. You should be like, KSI, KSI, like, uh, do, you, do you ever like volunteer for like charities or something like that? And then be like, Jake Paul wants to know if you're going to volunteer to be unconscious soon. <laughs> You know, that's a great way for me to get my media credential revoked, I think. That is true. Don't do that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I already almost got it revoked with Dana White that time when I asked him about the diss track. That one almost yeah, got no, me he, kicked out. Yeah, he's apparently, like, uh, revoking people's media credentials if they ask about me or Anderson. Well, I'll ask him when I'm in New York and I see him in a couple of weeks. I'll tell him you asked him personally. Right. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Shake, and uh, good luck with the rest of your, uh, your, your thing today. And thank you, as always, for all the time you give. You're great. Awesome. Peace out, man. Thank you. Thanks very much, guys.